Welcome to The Dental Brief, the world's direct, right-to-the-point podcast produced to get you the information you need to learn and grow your practice. To learn more about our guests and find links to information discussed on our show, visit our website, dentalbrief.com. On to today's episode. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Dental Brief. Today, we have with us from Canada, Miss Irene Yanku. Irene, say hello to everyone. Hello, everyone. What is up, peeps? Thanks for having me. You are. It's 7.30 p.m. Eastern time when we're recording this, right? Yeah. Yeah, so you're the one that's up. Um, up. Yeah, sounds like it's been a busy, long day for you, which is fantastic. Um, Tell us a little bit about your background, right? Um, I'll let you actually kind of tell your story a little bit, how you got into dentistry um, and what you do now. Yeah, kind of Cole's Notes version. Uh, I'm a hygienist. I've been a hygienist of 13 years. Uh, way back, playbacks, graduation of 2007 with an undergraduate degree of nothing that I use today uh, and found my way into dentistry because of a, a, a failed relationship with my high school sweetheart, believe it or not. I think that's all how all good stories begin, right? Something failed and then something beautiful turned out of it. For yeah. every, someone once said to me, um, For good things to come together, sometimes bad things have to fall apart or vice versa, however you want to say it. But, you know, I I decided to venture into dental hygiene. And uh, for the first few years years of my career, you know, I just did the hustle and the grind. I uh, worked six to seven days a week to pay off student loans and kind of build a career for myself. And for the first few years, I mean, I, I, I didn't really aspire to do very much other than scale teeth and go home and cash in my paycheck and buy whatever I could. Until about year seven, I realized that I wanted to do a little bit more. And that a little bit more led me into speaking. Sorry, my husband just came in and is tearing down the house. No, you're good. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I wanted to do a little bit more. I, I got into teaching. I started teaching at my alma mater in dental hygiene school. And I started working for some cool companies like Invisalign and 3M and P&G on the platform where we share our knowledge with our community. And it led me to to wanting to do more with my profession. And in the province of Ontario here and a lot of other provinces in Canada and some states in the United States, dental hygienists are able to open up their own practices. So I put together a series of business plans that led me to creating my own studio called the Tooth Life Studio. Front facing to the public, it operates just like a dental office. There's two docs that work on site and I have another hygienist and a full team. And, uh, you know, we, we do dentistry and we do dentistry well and we do dentistry uh, the way that I believe it, it ought to be done, uh, taking into consideration not only our patients, but also our team, because they are by far an extension of, of our family. So, yeah, I have an Instagram page that has quite a few followers and I do some tutorial videos and fun stuff on there. So check out toothlife.irene on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, and, you're, uh, you're, yeah. Uh, you're certainly popular and we're, we're glad to be able to have you here. Um, and definitely want my uh, audience uh, to check out um, your site and to check out your Instagram. Um, I, I have to imagine, casual conversation, I have to imagine that you get a little bit of pushback as far as owning a practice. Um, being a hygienist, right? Yeah, it, it makes for a really good <laughs> speaking opener, uh, I, showing some of the comments of what people say about a hygiene run practice. And I mean, yeah, there, there's pushback, I think more so because people just don't quite understand the dynamic. Sure. But I, I have to under, I, I have to imagine, um, you know, not being a dentist or a hygienist, um, I have to imagine that um, there's a lot of things that hygienists see differently than dentists do in a, in a positive way, right? Maybe not necessarily in a clinical way, but in the way that a very consumer oriented business should be run. Um, and it is, I know a lot of people like the term patient. They don't necessarily like the, the term consumer, but when they leave, they're definitely consumers, right? When right. they come in, they're definitely consumers. So um, you get out non COVID, I'm sure you get it a little bit more, but you're out and about your ears to the ground. Tell me some problems and um, challenges that you're seeing that uh, practice and team members are, are having. Yeah. Well, aside from the, the ma- building of a team at a, during a <clears throat> global pandemic and as a startup, I mean, that's a challenge that I think a lot of people are facing right now is finding the right people to fill those roles. Um, you know, the way that I've kind of structured our team and our, our business is, 
do the people in our team follow those core values? So when I was putting together my business plan and I, when, when I was putting together the concept of what I wanted this practice to look like, I scoured the internet for big corporations that I you know, subscribed to, their beliefs, the way they structure their internal organization. And I stole their, their core values. And I, you know, I went to Starbucks, I went to Google, I went to Apple, and those core values that people spend you know, tons of money putting together, I took them and I rephrased them. Uh, to what would adapt to dentistry. So whenever I was looking for a team player, I would read off my core values and say, how does this, how does this sound to you? Does this sound like something you agree with or disagree with? Not telling them that, you know, I stole this from Starbucks and now it has to do with dentistry. Sure. <clears throat> Irene, can you share one of those? Maybe not which one you oh, stole or what sure. it was before you stole, but what are, what are yeah, one of your core so, values? So one, one, one for Google is fast is always better than slow. Um, and that is one of them that is in my intake forms is, do you believe that fast is always mm. better than slow when it comes to dentistry? And it's one that I don't believe in. Uh, I don't believe that in dentistry fast is better than, better than slow, but I'm, you know, opening up this conversation with someone to figure out whether they'd be a good fit or not. Sure. Um, another one that I really like Ritz Carlton, um, in their kind of sentence, it's a full sentence, but short version of it is always say someone's name, always greet them with a smile and always say their name and greet them with a smile when they leave. So sure. if I don't hear one of my team members, you know, say, welcome Judy for your appointment. Um, so happy to see you here today. And thank you, Judy, for coming in today. Um, then they're not really connecting with our core values of our practice. Yeah, that's, um, that's great. Great adoption, right? And a, and, a, and a great way to have some really meaningful conversations with potential candidates. Mm -hmm. um, so what other what other types of advice do you have as far as staffing team is concerned? Yeah. Team? Well, I think I think it really comes down to you as a practice owner and you really need to dive in. I mean, we we are at the office generally before everyone else and after everyone else. And if you're not there before everyone else or after everyone else, then you know, you have to lead by example. So even if I don't have a patient or even if I'm not scheduled to go into work that day, I'm still there for the team meetings in the morning and I have a team huddle every day. Sometimes we've got lots to talk about and sometimes we just read our, you know, five-star Google reviews, which by the way, we do every morning. We go into our Google reviews and we see who's read them and who's written on them and we read them as a team and we identify them, even the bad feedback. I mean, we don't get much bad feedback, but when we do, we identify, well, why did this person say these things? How do we pull that apart and how do we change that experience for the next person? Because after all, you know, they are consumers, yes, but they're also humans. And some of these humans are scared and some of these humans are little tiny humans that are experiencing dentistry for the first time. So we take feedback really important uh, or we create importance to our feedback so that we can identify you know, what are we doing right? What are we doing wrong? What should we do more of? And what should we do a lot less of? And I have those conversations with patients in the chair, like a new patient. The first thing I say to them is, thank you so much for coming in today. Insert name here. Why did you come here? What made you come here? Was it a Google view? Was it a, a, a patient that sent you in? Did you just walk by? And then, you know, once I get that response and I say, okay, great. So tell me about your last visit at the dentist. What did you love and what did you not love? Mm, because I want to do more of what you love and less of what you don't love. Um, and you'd be surprised how many people come in with the bar set really low. It's like, well, you know, I didn't really have a great experience. I didn't have a terrible experience. It was just like, you know, an experience. And I love that. I love when people come in and the bar is so low that all I have to do is put a little Vaseline on their lips and I've already surpassed, I've jumped over that bar. Like I just, just right over top of it. Something as simple as I see your lips are really dry. Like, let me grab a Q-tip and let me grab a little squeeze of Vaseline from my top drawer. And they're like, oh, Oh, well, that that's nice. Thanks. And then that translated into a Google review or five. Um, so it's it's the little things that really count. Your dentistry could be beautiful. You could have fantastic veneers and do a great all on four. But if you don't make someone connect with your practice and your team well, then right. unfortunately, <laughs> you might not be as successful at building a, a, a good practice that has long lasting patients. Yeah, no, that's um, Google reviews are so critical. By the way, you're the first person that ever have ever heard say that they read the reviews in their huddle. Yeah, every um, day. I think every I morning. think that is such an important thing to focus on the good or the bad. Also, you know, I will say too, I, a lot of people talk about reviews, and usually, um, reviews are something that most dentists don't like. Most people in the healthcare industry don't like them. There are going to be times that you're going to get bad reviews that are over things like billing, cost. Right. These are things that are legitimate, though. Right. I mean, if 
you know, billing goes sideways or if a cost was, you know, way more than, you know, someone had anticipated and they need work, they're going to be upset about that. And it may not necessarily be fair, but it doesn't mean that the person didn't have a one-star experience. Maybe you couldn't make it a five-star yeah. experience, but, you know, I, I'm, I promise you that there's periods of times in people's lives where if they have a $2,000 dental bill and it's the only thing they could do to get themselves out of pain, that is a one-star experience. Right. Right. It may not be a one-star experience compared to other practices, but it is for them that day. And I, and I think there is a way to write that, but I think reading those reviews is awesome. That's some a, really great advice. A step, oh, yeah. a step above of what we do with our reviews. And like we, we've got 60 reviews. We've been open for six months. So a rev, I mean, we, we get a decent amount. We've had <clears> in six months, like 700 plus new patients. So not everyone's going to leave a review. So when we go into our morning huddles, if we don't have a review, we look at our competitors. And I mean, I don't want to say that they're a competitor because, you know, there's enough teeth to go around and the dental office down the street perhaps is doing things differently. But we look at their reviews and we identify what are they doing that is, you know, attracting patients because I'm sure they're getting new patients as well. And what types of things are people pinpointing that they dislike? And, you know, right. oftentimes it's not like the dental dentist's work or the dental hygienist's work. It's not like, oh, the margins of that filling were really crappy and now I'm getting food stuck. It's how you make people feel. And as you mentioned, Patrick, about, you know, that $2,000 bill, or if something goes sideways with billing, a lot of that stuff could be mitigated. And it's looking at other people's reviews and identifying, okay, well, what could have gone sideways in that person's experience? And how do we identify that? So a really good kind of tidbit and takes a little extra time um, is we get a breakdown for every single patient. And it takes time. Like today, I was the receptionist in my office because my receptionist was out of the office. So, you know, I picked up the phone and I got break Downs. I called insurance companies. I did all of that fun stuff. Um, but when the person comes in the next day, we use Yappy, which is a paperless software kind of integration with our open dental. Um, they, I know exactly what their primary covers. I know exactly what their secondary cover. I know that they've got 85% cover in their maximum of their preventative care. So when that person comes in and I can say, hey, Aaron, thanks so much for coming today. I got a breakdown of your insurance yesterday. It took a little while, but I figured it all out. It looks like today's visit is going to be covered 80%. You're only going to be out of pocket 20%. Is that okay? And we do that right before we get started. So there's no like expectation at the end of like, well, my insurance always covers this or sure. I've never had to pay before. It's like, this is what it is. We did the background work. We took the time. Are you cool with that? And most of the time, again, read our Google reviews, people say they were so well prepared for my visit. They knew exactly what my coverage was and we took care of it. And they don't care pulling out their credit card and paying for that balance um, when you know we're ready. And our, our competitors' reviews have helped us um, identifying the gaps in their structures to be able to implement better structures in our practice. I mean, that's awesome. That's just great advice. That is <laughs> such a great process. Um, you know, the three P's, right? And the, yeah. you know, the process part of it and what you've got going on with people, um, you know, I think it's great. And obviously you have products helping you out with that as well. So um, I'm really impressed with um, what you're doing. It's fantastic. Oh gosh, um, I feel like I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm like, throw me in the deep end and see if I can swim. Like there's so much pressure <laughs> running a practice as a hygienist in, in comparison to like a doc because a doc can produce, right? They can pop out a few crowns and they're good to go. But as a hygienist with the same overhead as a doctor, it's, it's very different. So I feel like I have a lot more to prove. Yeah, I'm sure that you do. Right. I think you have a lot to prove to yourself and that's great. Yeah. And that's awesome. And I mean, your attitude's spot on the impressed learning from other companies and other types of industries, I think is something that lacks in the dental industry. Um, right. I, I like to tell people all the time and I tell dentists this and they look at me like I'm crazy, but you should act as if Amazon or Google is going to get in your business. Mm hmm. Right. So what would happen if Amazon tomorrow, Jeff Bezos said, yeah. hey, I'm stepping down from Amazon because I'm starting AmazonDentistry.com. Mm -hmm. What would you do? Like, what would you have done differently if you knew Amazon was going to get into your space? Because you're not going to be able to compete with them on price. Right. Right. And cost and what have you. So looking at all these other companies and finding out their whys and what they're doing, I think is brilliant. And um, what you're doing with reviews is, is great. And that's a huge benefit to our audience. I'm so glad that you're here today to, to tell us this. Oh, my pleasure. I mean, I encourage everyone to do it. I mean, don't, don't take it personally. You can't, you can't help how someone 
uh, you know, writes down stuff on their phone or, you know, sends a review off, but you can use that as a way to use a magnifying glass almost to look within your business. And it's not always personal in the social media world. You know, when you've got 20 to 30,000 followers, people are going to say weird stuff. They're going to slide into your DMs. They're going to be rude. They're going to ask you if you've gained weight or if you've lost weight or if this has happened. And you have to like have a little bit of a thick skin. And in dentistry, it's no different. Like patients are going to project how they feel on you as the business owner. So take that information and don't internalize it in a negative way. Internalize it into a way that you can make positive change for not only yourself and your team, but for the new patients that you hope to be getting from referral. Yeah, that's brilliant. Your Instagrams, uh, toothlife.irene, correct? That's the one. Yep. Uh, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us on today's episode. Did you know you can weigh in on today's topic on Facebook? Search The Dental Brief on Facebook or visit our website, dentalbrief.com, and just follow the link. We look forward to having you join us again on another episode of The Dental Brief.